Welcome back to Firestorm Games, and you're joining us as we take a look at one of Games Workshop's latest releases for Age of Sigmar. The kit in question is part of the second wave of Lumineth Realm Lords releases, and they are, of course, the Alarith Stone Guard. And as always, we'll be building a couple of the models from this kit while talking about its features and how the models look before taking a look at some of the assembled miniatures. So, let's get started. The Alarith Stone Guard are the heavy infantry of the Lumineth Realm Lords. Their armor is heavier and bulkier than that worn by their warden comrades. However, their armor save remains at 4 plus due to their lack of shields. This is because of their heavier weapons. The Stone Guard, as their name suggests, carry one of two types of stone headed two handed hammers. Both of these weapon choices share the same profile coming in at two attacks and hitting and wounding on a 3+, the hammers offer fairly consistent damage output. Their true value, however, lies in their minus one Ren value. Among the rank and file of the Lumineth Realm Lords, a consistent Ren characteristic is pretty rare. Instead, most units rely on their Sun Metal Mortal Wounds. As a result, the Stone Warden should be directed towards your opponent's more heavily armored units. However, carrying around heavier armor and lumps of rocks does slow these guys down to a 4 inch move, meaning you'll need to keep them shielded from tar pits with your faster moving units. The Stone Guard don't have much in the way of a snazzy rule set, but depending on their weapon choice, they do have different capabilities. The Diamond Pick Hammer grants you the same benefits of other units' some metal weapons triggering a mortal wound when a 6 is rolled to hit, particularly useful against tough elite units. However, my personal preference is probably the stone mallet. By granting an additional point of damage on the hit roll of a 6, it ramps up its usefulness of your minus 1 capabilities. For a unit of 10, you'd expect to get at least 2 or 3 extra wounds from a round of combat from this ability. Perfect against larger armored battle lines like Chaos Warriors. They may not be guaranteed wounds, but you do lose the benefits of your better to hit and rend values when you trigger your diamond pick special ability. So, with the rules covered, how do the miniatures themselves hold up? As I've briefly mentioned, the armor they wear is much heavier armor than that worn by the Wardens, being more like a suit of full plate armor worn over a robe. The armor is much more ornate, featuring ornate swirls and fractures across the surface. However, their helmet is probably my one point of contention. The tall peaked helmet is reminiscent of the older High Elf models, which is a nice throwback and one that I fully support. However, the cow head and horns is just a little too overpowering. I think the horns would have worked further down the head, but the cow face is just too much in my opinion. The kit itself is well detailed though, and can be put together with ease, something that is fairly standard with modern Games Workshop kits. As already mentioned, the two-handed hammers have two different hammerheads. The diamond pick is a rounded hammer on one side with a large shard of diamond at the other, whereas the mallets are a lot simpler. In addition to these, we also have one-handed stratum hammers for the unit's seneschal and standard bearer, now, one in every five of your models can be equipped with a standard, which helps to feed into this unit's resilience by allowing them to re-roll any failed battle shock tests. So, now that I've discussed the kit and its rules, let's finish assembling these and take a look at a couple of the finished miniatures. And so, that concludes our look at the Alarath Stone Guard. Overall, the kit is really nicely detailed and has some good aesthetics. They tear nicely with the other Lumineth units, but are clearly defined as being the elite units that they are. The cow iconography is a little odd in my opinion, but it does fit in with the other Alarith units like the Stone Mage and Spirit of the Mountain. Now, there isn't a whole deal of customization in this kit, beyond the alternative hammerheads and unit leader and banner options. This does mean that fielding large numbers of these models will mean that you are repeating poses and is something which is becoming more and more common among these releases. However, it is a great looking kit with some solid rules that will help to give your Lumineth Realm Lords a little more punch 
and some much needed rending capabilities. If you're looking to pick up this kit for yourself, you'll be able to save yourself a little money as you'll find this kit for at least 10% off the RRP on the Firestorm Games web store, which you can find a link to in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave you your comments and subscribe to be kept up to date with all of our future videos. And so we shall say a big thank you for watching this video, and we hope to see you again on Firestorm Games.